No. It's for the man or the woman, the friend or the lover that truly became your partner. The person who changed everything. None of this happens in a single moment. There isn't a magical strike of lightning to your heart indicating that your relationship has evolved into something unknown to you. There isn't a benchmark, threshold, or classification for what it means to achieve a real partnership with another human being. In many ways, it's actually quite unnatural. We live in a time when self-interest and unwavering dedication to independence are widely encouraged. For all intents and purposes, this is a good thing. We should be empowered, confident, and able to thrive without deep ties to anyone or anything. The powerful concept of survival of the fittest depends on it. It should be difficult to achieve that loving relationship. If it were easy, it wouldn't be so remarkably valuable. And as the saying goes, maybe everybody would do it. Partnership is hard, though. It's about more than just passion and loyalty. I used to believe those were the only things a relationship needed to be successful and real. But I've learned a lot since then. It's a choice. And one you keep making every day until something inside of you changes. As I reflect on it all, I've been selfish in relationships. Not because I deserved more or because I was thinking unfairly. It was because I trusted my instincts and I felt like I could trust my individual perception and perspective. We've all been selfish in relationships, especially when we're young. It's natural. Generally, that's how most of us survived when we were first trying to navigate the twists and turns and complexities of caring deeply for someone else. If we got hurt, sometimes we gave hurt back. If we felt betrayed, we might think it's justifiable to dish out equal betrayal. If when we felt like we were going to be left behind, we left first. We fought for our own feelings and arguments. We fought for what we feel. And sometimes at all costs. At least that's what I did. And what so many people around me did also. So much love and passion was thrown around, but it didn't matter because in the end, I always chose myself. And so did everyone else I knew. This wasn't something I noticed at the time, and you probably didn't either, until you actually started choosing someone other than yourself to be ultimately important for the right reason. If you look at the classic young adult and early in life relationship like the ones I've previously described, you realize that what is significantly missing is that they aren't even remotely on the same team. If you are not on the same team, nothing will ever work. When the concept occurred to me and I started to talk to my dear wife, Valrina, and our outstanding young sons, Omar and Ali, about the concept of being a four-person team, that was it. That was the piece that had always been missing in my life. The uncompromisingly and thoroughly complete love for these connected human beings. I loved my wife and I felt so fortunate and blessed about it that I would say it out loud in various environments and be proud of it. It was amazing that I could love so deeply and in such an all-encompassing way, but I had yet to understand the reality of true partnership is friendship. It's being that person's thoroughly connected teammate. And in being so, learning one of life's most profound and special lessons, which is that giving is living. Making someone else stronger makes you better, too. It's as simple as a well-timed acknowledgement, a smile when you walk into the room, a hug at the end of a long day, 